Welcome y'all to another episode of Lily Sizzling and tonight we're going to be making something different. We're going to be celebrating our annual uh, Christmas tradition where I've kind of done some different Christmas recipes from around the world. We've done American cookies, we've done turkeys, we've done um, Mexican uh, tamales and this year we're going to do some Kwanzaa stew. So we're doing different holidays from around the world. Tonight this is going to be Kwanzaa stew and these are like little squash bread rolls here that I've handmade squash bread rolls covered in butter with our Kwanzaa stew paired with a beautiful wine. So you don't want to miss this. This is a very beautiful episode. Uh, everything just tastes so great. So come join us. Come see how to cook this beautiful dish tonight on Lily's Sizzling and check us out. So come check us out on sizzletastic.com and you can check us out also on the Lily Sizzling YouTube channel. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and share with your friends and come learn how to make a beautiful holiday dish. Or no matter what holiday you're celebrating, beautiful holiday dish. Thank you. All right, y'all. So for tonight for our bread, we're going to start in by dissolving a packet of yeast in warm water. Well, maybe like a little whisker spoon or something. And so we're going to let this guy dissolve in some more water and we're going to be adding this into our bread with, along with another packet of yeast. Tonight we're going to start off our Kwanzaa stew and we're going to start off here with uh, some squash bread. So we're going to make some squash rolls which are like little dinner rolls that will be dipped in our stew. Now I'm going to go with a vegetarian uh, theme tonight since uh, the Kwanzaa stew is a vegetarian dish and I will be explaining more about the culture just like I did when we did the um, Mexican tamales last year as a uh, holiday dish. So different cultures do different things for the holidays and they celebrate holidays differently. So some, some uh, cultures, uh, the Christian and Catholic cultures celebrate Christmas and then the Kwanzaa culture is mainly celebrated, I would say, by African Americans. And so all different types of cultures celebrate differently. So what we're going to do here is we're covering our squash and we have in here some water. If you can see, I've added a little bit of water in with our squash. This is a, we're going to use this squash twice over. Some is going to be used for our bread rolls and some is also going to be used for our Kwanzaa stew. So I've covered it with a little bit of uh, olive, uh, of olive oil as well and uh, there is some rosemary and thyme on top of it. So, and a little bit of salt. This is going to bake into the oven at 400 degrees. And once it's nice and soft, uh, we can cube it and do what we need to do with it. So we put it into our bread. So into the oven this goes, 400 degrees. Here it's sizzling away already. Alrighty, and now this is for the fun part here. This is how we're gonna make our bread. So we're gonna start out with an oiled bowl because the bread as it rises, will stick to the bowl. So take a little bit of just any old oil, vegetable or, or uh, olive oil here, and make sure that your bowl is pretty well oiled all the way around. Any excess oil you can drain, or you can leave it in there if you want. I'm gonna drain it. Back on camera in a second. There we go. All right, so we're gonna start with about six cups of flour. This is about a good half a cup to, oh, I'm gonna say uh, about two thirds cup of sugar. One and a half cups of milk. And then this is gonna be our fun part right here. This right here is called shortening, folks. And this uh, kind of goes into a lot of different baking dishes. And if you can remember last year with my tamales as well, we used shortening in the tamales, so we're gonna use shortening in the bread this year. So. We're gonna need about half a cup, and you can kind of see right here on the side that it has a neat little uh, measuring system. So basically, cut it in half, and that's about half a cup. And we're gonna cut this, put this shortening in here. We're gonna mix all this good in ingredients up together here with the blender or egg beater in a few seconds. And just a little bit of salt. So there we have it. This is our base here for our bread. And let's not forget the yeast. So you're going to want uh, some active dry yeast into your bread. My hands are oily from the shortening, so it's hard to open that. It's like, ah. Okay, scissors we go. So get out your scissors if your fingers are too oily from the shortening. And yeast kind of looks neat. It looks like little pellets, if you can kind of see that. 
I'm going to put the yeast in. There we have it. And then we're going to... <laughs> we're going to blend this together and then we're going to let it rise. So let's get out our egg beater. Rise. And let's try, yes, rise, rise bread. Dark bread. <laughs> and we'll have our bread rising for about an hour and then we'll uh, put our squash in and then let it rise for another 30 minutes while we're making our stew. It will rise. So we're going to start using our egg beater. If you want to make this more vegan, you can cut out the milk with almond milk or whatever type of product that you use as a milk substitute. I am, however, very allergic to nuts of all sorts, so unfortunately for me, it has to be real milk. That's a blender. He says, I've had it. So I'm just going to sit here and struggle with my ancient egg beater. Lily says Lily needs a new egg beater. And we're going to turn this stuff into dough as you can kind of see it's doing. So I'll be back to you after I turn it into dough. So now we have a dough ball here and I'm going to mix in this dough ball a little bit more here. I'm going to take some more milk that I've microwaved, about another half a cup. And we're just gonna put this all together just like this now. We're gonna make a nice big dough ball. Dope. Yeah. It sticks, so I have my hands floured, but sometimes that doesn't matter. Thank you for stabilizing the bowl, cameraman. It's like I can't get a shot with you moving the bowl everywhere, Lily. And so basically, you kind of just start forming a big old dough ball out of it and then we're gonna let it rise all that stuff at the bottom too pull it all together all together it's crispy, crumbly, flaky, yep doughy. it's dough for sure ball a dough and we're gonna cover this with a wet rag that is warmed so I'm going to warm up a wet rag real quick with some warm water. We're going to cover it with that rag. And this dough, over the next course of an hour, will rise. It will double. And so after it doubles, we're going to add a little bit of squash into it, let it double again, and then we're going to bake it into little uh, uh, rolls while we're making our stew. So anyways, I'm going to go wash my hands. We're going to let our dough rise. We're going to cover it. And then we're going to start working on our stew here uh, after this doubles. Alrighty folks, so I've taken a warm rag here that I've warmed up with some water and we're going to put this warm rag over the tops of the stove and the stove is basically going to rise for the next hour so set your watch, come back out here and we're going to check on our squash here in about 30-40 minutes and uh, check on our dough and everything else that's going on with that. So let's let all this stuff cook and get ready and the Kwanzaa stew actually is a very fast recipe. It's so your dough is going to take the longest to make these little winter squash rolls. So that's, uh, you need to prepare ahead for your dough, or you can use a prepared bread if, if you didn't want to make it handmade. Uh, but for our show purposes, we're going to do everything handmade tonight. All right, so we'll come back to you then with Kwanzaa stew and fixing up the rest of these uh, little rolls. So as you can see here, our squash is done. Basically, we've cooked that in the oven, and it's nice and nice and done and I've got some pieces of squash here and we're just going to peel it off the skin like so the fork and as you can see right here our bread is doubled this is a good excellent time to add in your squash now and let your bread continue to rise right up until we have to bake it which it only takes about seven to ten minutes to bake once we get into baking dishes so what we're going to do is, is we're going to allow it more time to rise while we work on our stew next. You just get the skins off. That's basically what I'm doing. Very easy, it just comes right off. Very pretty squash for our stew. Oh, nasty. Kneaded and oh, stretched so around. Cool. 
It is. Metal dough. <laughs> All right. <laughs> I'm going to go get the stuff for the stew ready. Oh, shit in there. You are making my dough very weird, but yeah, have fun with that. One of the tricks to get my dough to rise too, and I'll tell you while he's kneading it was, is I left the oven on at 400 and kind of cracked it and let the heat of the oven come up on the dough uh, that was sitting right there and it helped it rise faster. And uh, that's good because you want to use the heat and not too much heat either because you can kill your yeast. So you have to use a specific amount of heat, like about 100 degrees of heat. And it helps your yeast rise quicker because uh, especially in the winter time, if it is cold outside and cold in your house, subsequently your yeast is not going to rise in the dough and it won't turn out. So it takes it a few moments. There you go. That's a nice good knead. That's good. That's good. Thank you. Get out of there. Get. Okay. Oh, no, uh, no, you are not touching uh, me with that. Oh my goodness. Uh, you flicked some <laughs> in my hair. Did not. You're dead. Yeah. You're dead. All right, so we're gonna cover this back up and we're gonna continue to let it rise. I'm gonna get the dough out of my hair after he's done playing in it now. And uh, we're gonna get our stew up here and ready to go. We're back here. I'm going to add some olive oil over here into our pan and we're going to heat it up to about a medium. Meanwhile, our dough is still rising. Some more. Now I've got our baking dishes out ready to start cooking this dough too. And our oven is set to 350 degrees to cook our squash rolls. Onions and our vegetables. We'll make a nice uh, curry based powder that will go to season our stew. Hey, no escapees, misters. So green onions in and then we're going to go for squash next. Uh, these squashes, the zucchini and summer squashes and finish up our green onions and get everything in here. So we've got a squash here and we're going to just chop him up too and we're going to get him nice and sauteed in there with the onions. It's not hard to chop a squash. There we have it. Squash is chopped. It's a nice summer squash. Very pretty. And then we're going to do the same thing with zucchini. Basically you're going to need a total of about four squashes. Very squash heavy dish. I'm going to get the other squash chopped up and uh, then we're going to start putting this on here in a few seconds. So total of four squashes total. So we're going to zucchini and two summer squashes. All right. So after the squash, we'll get up the rest of the ingredients coming up to you next. All right, y'all. So we're going to put this over here onto our uh, burner and we're going to get a little bit more olive oil ups over the tops of these. And next we're going to season. We're going to go with some garlic pepper. That's garlic and pepper combined. And the cinnamon. A little bit of seasoned salt. Some ginger. I have a modified curry here. And some red pepper. say a good teaspoon or so of each. And then just a little bit of chili powder. Once again, a good teaspoon or so of each. And we're going to get out our medium spoon and give it a whirl. I'm going to let this saute here in these nice spices. You can go ahead and cover this. Let's saute. We're going to start preparing the rest of this up, which is going to include some garbanzo beans, some tomatoes, and of course our uh, 
acorn squash here that we cooked up prior that's going into our squash rolls. So let's get all that coming up next. We're going to put some nice cilantro in there too and everything else. And once this is done cooking down, we're going to get our bread, uh, bread rolls up into the oven. Coming back to you. Not the most exciting thing to watch. No, it is not the most exciting thing to watch. But this is how you skin your squash, basically. Ah, yeah, that rhymes. See, you just made it more exciting. Skin your squash. Watch squash. This holiday season, skin your squash. When you're making your stew. So I'm sure we're going to be asked by viewers out there in the world, of why are you uh, cooking Kwanzaa stew and do white people or Native American people or whatever celebrate Kwanzaa? And the answer is, well, like I said, it's mainly uh, African Americans, but they're, because of our cultural ties with, with everyone, a lot of holidays are just being uh, cross-celebrated by all different uh, people anymore. And because of that, Anyone can really celebrate honest. Kwanzaa as long as you remember the principles, just like you do with if, if you're celebrating Christmas, but you're not a Christian, you just remember the principles of kindness and, and family and stuff like that around Christmas time. And the same thing with Kwanzaa is you remember unity and to help support uh, everyone like in the African American communities and stuff. And if you're celebrating um, Hanukkah or want to teach your children about Hanukkah, you do the same. You, you respect the uh, the culture and so it's about respecting culture. You don't have to be of that culture, but it's about respecting it. I was actually it. thinking okay. Kwanzaa was a uh, Jewish thing. No, no. Kwanzaa is... Mis yeah. Misunderstanding. So now that we're educated on that, that's neat because some people don't know. We saw the candles and stuff. It looked good. Like squash and all oh, that was a Jewish thing. No. I will. I will have to do a Hanukkah episode. Maybe Hanukkah. we can. Oh man, I got like a Hanukkah memory. Yeah, we can do Hanukkah maybe next year because that that would be a great one to do too. So we've been to Mexico and now we've done uh, African American and maybe we'll try some. Uh, some it's a good point Jewish you're holidays. making there. When you think of your favorite food, just think of it for a long time. Where does it come from? Very true. Whatever your favorite item, food item is, just where or where in the world did it originate from? Think about that because everything that, that comes from different places of the world, right? Like these tomatoes might come from Italy. Uh, beans from Mexico. I mean, you you have everything kind of combined. It's it's, it's culture and stuff uh, has kind of combined. I mean, you have a if you like to go to Taco Bell, well then you you like a, an American Mexican type food, and if you like to go eat eat cheeseburgers or whatever, then and you like American food. And if you like pizza, then you're liking stuff from Naples, Italy. So everyone's kind of uh, kind of combined. My two favorite foods. <laughs> Yeah, I know. Pizza and nachos. Two different cultures. Mexico and Italy. So yeah, everything's like that. So you just got to be respectful and have cultural relativism of, of everyone's culture right now, especially around the holidays and with all the stuff that's been happening this year and stuff. So just remember that. So be grateful that we have all these intermixtures of cultures and that we can be celebrating and, and trying different foods from different regions of the world or from different cultural holidays. So I've got our cilantro here chopped up, and we've got our squash ready to go in here, and we're just waiting on these guys to finish sizzling up. They smell nice and wonderful and sizzle fantastic in there. And I'm going to clean up this mess here, get our cans ready, and, and then we're going to start working on this bread and getting that baking in the oven. Bread in the oven. I think I got enough bread in my oven to be baking. Don't you think? Don't you think? I'm doing like a couple days. I'm up here cooking for y'all. so. Come enjoy our food next. Alrighty, y'all, we're back and you come over here and look at our beautiful squash, summer squash and zucchini. Those guys are about done here, so we're gonna start adding in all of our other ingredients. This is our cilantro and our acorn squash. Got a good cup or so of acorn squash, basically a good half of the acorn squash there and half into our bread. And here's a can of tomatoes. And then we're going to add in 
two cans worth of garbanzo beans. And next, we're gonna take, I'm gonna put a couple of these little peppers and add them in there for some extra flavor. Just a couple. You can do more if you want. These are little banana peppers. I'm just gonna give them a dice. Maybe some green chili would be good too. If you had a can of green chili set, that would be nice too. So there we have it. There's everything in there. I'm just gonna give this a good stir. We're gonna toss this together. And this, folks, basically is our Kansas stew. And we're gonna let this cook and saute and do its thing for about a good 15 minutes or so. We're gonna cover it. That looks very festive and very colorful. I can see why, why this would be a nice Kwanzaa because you got the reds and the greens that's just like in the, in the candle colors that, that I was talking about. Alrighty y'all, we're back here and I've got basically some pans here and I'm just going to spread around some olive oil here and we're going to cut our pans. Here I make a couple baking dishes full of bread. Meanwhile our stew is turning out just really beautiful and then you've just seen it thought about it's cooking away, cooking away. Okay, so for our bread, we're going to take a good handful like this of our dough. We're going to kind of shape it into a dough bowl. Kind of like you're making a snowball. And we're going to put it in here and we're going to kind of keep it separated, but they will kind of cook together. And it'll look kind of neat, so you'll be able to just kind of cut right into it. So we're just going to take some Don't handfuls here. Don't be stingy. Here. Oh, I won't be. You're just going to pull your dough apart to see how it kind of pulls apart like that. This is a nice good dough. When it's like this, it's not too liquidy and it's not too dry. That's one of the tricks to making a good dough. So we're basically going to go around here. Make some dough. Dough balls. These are going to be little bread rolls. I wish I was making some dough. Yeah, I know, right? Yo. Clicking our YouTube ads, make some dough. Yo. Okay. Take that dough to go. Uh, yeah. These look delicious already. I want to eat them. <laughs> I can just ahead. eat it as can I just eat it as is. Okay, one tray is done right there. We're going to finish up our second day now. Lobby, lobby. That stretches. So now that we've learned to make dough, we can, apply, play -Doh. we can apply dough to different things, like maybe pizza in the future. Now I didn't need no fancy smancy bread maker. I used my hands and my <coughs> little... No, originally my hands, and I used my little budget guy there. My little, uh... My budget guy. No, you are not budget guy. My little budget, budget egg man. beater. Egg beater. I swear to heck that that egg beater is probably as old as me. I think it was my grandma's egg beater. It's a really old egg beater. Your grandma, your collection of all her stuff. I know. We are running a Kickstarter program to fund Lily Sizzling's kitchen. Yes, please. A mobile fun. kitchen, to be exact. Yes, I'd like to do a mobile kitchen. I've discussed that on YouTube. Please donate to help us out. I'm just stingy. There we go. And we've got another good sized dough ball here. Maybe I can move this. Tuck him in. He looks. Yep, I'm Let's tucking him in and he's going to bed. Alrighty, Mr. Doe. Y'all are going to go into the oven 350 degrees for about a good 10, 15 minutes. Meanwhile, our stew here just looking sizzle-tastic. I bet that'd be really fun to fry. Sizzle, no, sizzle-tastic stew. 
looking very nice coming together it looks beautiful so there we have it folks our bread is in our stew is cooking and simmering away and we're going to get ready to eat coming up to you next so let's get this stuff ready to plate on up let me come wash my hands Alrighty, y'all we're ready to eat come over here and look at our stew it's beautiful and it's nice and done should get some of that beautiful vegetable broth up in here. There we go. Get that vegetable broth right over the tops. And look at our bread. Our bread's nice and done. So I'm going to put on this here handy dandy oven mitt. Because it's still Fresh nice and hot. Good. Yeah, I know. All right, cut out a couple of bread rolls here. I won't be stingy. <laughs> you beat me to it. Yes, I know I did. Don't be stingy. Nah, it's not the same. Ooh, hot bread, hot bread, hot bread. There we go. Got a nice hot piece of bread right there. Now yeah, we're going to get up another little piece of bread right here. And I'm going to put a little bit of butter on our bread. Right over the tops. Just melt some butter on the tops of these breads. Beautiful bread. It's a very beautiful. I cannot wait to taste that bread. So there we have it. We're going to go take this over the table. We're going to talk about it. And we're going to get ready to eat, y'all. This is awesome. Sizzle-tastic. Our ones of stew, and if you kind of remembered what we did is we started off with that uh, acorn squash there. We had that in kind of like strips. We cooked that in the oven about 400 degrees. We made our bread dough and we let our bread dough rise at the same time and you can follow along with all those ingredients there for that bread dough and we used that yeast uh, for it and we had to activate our yeast first and then we added our, our other packet of yeast straight into the bread dough and then we just went with it about six cups of flour, half a cup of sugar, uh, about a couple cups of milk that was warm and it helped bring out that beautiful bread. We used a shortening too. And then we use that uh, that nice acorn squash, like I said. And then we cut up all these different vegetables. We have the summer squash, the zucchini, the the little garbanzo beans, the cilantro, the green onions, and everything. And then I made a modified uh, curry powder with that. And so the curry was like the ginger and the and the chili and the garlic and the pepper and the red pepper and the cinnamon and the and everything just kind of came together. And it's just really, really, really sizzletastic. So if you're into drinking, you can kind of pair this with maybe like a nice, uh, kind of like light red wine. And it'll make it kind of like a very uh, nice colored uh, dish because you can see if you can bring up all these colors in this beautiful di dish uh, tonight here. So I hope you like this episode of Lily Sizzling. Hope you like our beautiful squash rolls. Those came up beautiful. First time I've, I've really made a, made a bread like this ever. So that came up uh, way better than planned. And uh, I hope you like this episode. Come watch us on sizzletastic.com, youtube.com, backslash Lily's Sizzling, two S's Lily's Sizzling. And then you can uh, go ahead and just uh, Facebook us, facebook.com, uh, backslash sizzletastic. Basically, if you Google Lily Sizzling or Sizzletastic, you'll see me. And uh, then you'll be able to find all of our episodes and recipes. Uh, we're over 70 plus episodes in. So I hope you all have a great holiday season. No matter what culture uh, you're celebrating, if you're celebrating Hanukkah, if you're celebrating Kwanzaa, if you're celebrating Christmas, if you're celebrating nothing but other than just being alive for that day, at least be out there and celebrate something and, and be glad to be here. So do that with a great beautiful meal and I hope you all have a great day and uh, enjoy this recipe right here to you. So bon appetit y'all. See you soon.